right, welcome everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for showing up here in Eve. Um, thanks for taking the time to uh, come and listen to the wise words of the uh, playbook uh, while I'm opposed to the spiritual leader. A um, few things. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the format of how this is going to go. Uh, I'm going to introduce him, and then he's going to sing a prayer song, and then he's going to talk for about an hour, and then we have a, a singer, Monique, who should be coming in any time now, who's going to be singing a song at the end, and then after she sings, uh, we'll, hopefully if we have time, we'll have a question and answer section for you guys. So that's the format. Um, I'd like to let everybody know this is a donation-based event. Um, nothing is required, but if you feel moved to donate, uh, that would be great. There's a, a box there labeled donations. Um, anything would help, and those donations go to the White Horse Creek Council, which is a nonprofit that's designed to um, educate the next generation of Lakota children. Um, it goes to the teachers as well as the children to read and write Lakota language, also read and write English. Um, it goes to traditional bead making, um, jewelry making, traditional ceremony with regalia, and to the ceremonies themselves. Um, for those of you who've never been to a Lakota ceremony, they're, they're not small. They're, they require a lot of work from just about everybody. So uh, it also goes to the travel expenses and lodging for me and his family and other singers and dancers and drummers. So anything that you do, donate would be great. We also have a few sage bottles back there. They're $10. Um, plenty of singers. His singing group are back there. They're $12. And um, we're just, it's just going to be cash or check if you have that. You can, uh, deal with me or Claire. Um, Claire is Claire's in the white dress there. She also handled any of those kind of transactions that you might be interested in. Um, I really like to thank Soulscape. Soulscape is the person, uh, the Ray Telnet. Uh, Soulscape, she, she's the one who reserved the room here for us and enabled us to be here on this day and have me speak. So, thank you to Soulscape. I'm going to share a couple of quick things that I've learned from the tutelage of, of Lee Cunningham and his family. Um, I've learned a lot, and there's a lot more to learn, for sure. But um, being a part of a traditional Lakota ceremony, um, I've learned that the sacred is real. And I think that a lot of people, maybe they don't know what that means. Or when I, when I, have, when I say that to people, sometimes they give me a weird eye and they look at me funny like, what? Like they don't know what the word sacred means or they don't know what sacred is. And that's why I'm bringing it up here today is that I've been able to be a part of sacred space and sacred ceremony and sacred song and sacred language and sacred events enough to where it's become apparent that the sacred is real. And so that's that's something that is priceless. So for those that have never seen it, my heart goes out to you. Um, I've also learned how to, which is what's happening right now, <laughs> move, move out of the, the mind of society and move into my heart, which is a, a process that I think all, all theologies or spiritual traditions are aiming to teach is, is a, it's actually a connection to the Creator or a connection to Spirit is something that's uh, done on an individual basis. So even though we're here in a group and we have a community, a common unity, the path that we walk is really a path of becoming your own individual. So it's a philosophy of becoming who you authentically are. So I've learned about the authentic self and how to be that and how to, how to walk with that each day. And then I've also learned um, specific techniques of prayer. And this is another one that sometimes when you say that word, people people might uh, not want to engage in conversation. Or so maybe they don't know what it is, or maybe they don't, they don't want to talk to you about your style of prayer. But um, I've learned a Lakota traditional style of prayer that's been really impactful for me. It, it's, it's really opened me up to, uh, to finding ways to consciously be centered and center myself. And um, I've learned these basic things from following very simple value systems that come through the little Kota. And um, he talks about them a lot, and they are they're basically, they, they're called the seven Lakota life values. And um, I, I also think that 
all theologies or philosophies or religious paths ultimately are, are trying to teach uh, high character. And so these values, if you if you were to be a, a person who uses these values daily, uh, regardless of your background, your, your culture, your ethnicity, or your religious beliefs, um, it will produce high character. And so the seven uh, the seven Lakota values are respect, honor, honesty, uh, humility, compassion, sacrifice, and wisdom. So if you're able to apply those to your life each day, um, it will produce a high character if you commit to those sort of things. So um, that's how I've been able to do that uh, to the best of my ability. And um, so, so now to introduce Lee. Um, Lee is a, a father family man. He's a grandfather. He is a, an Oglala Lakota elder, and he is also an elected liaison by the seven council fires of the Native American nations at Standing Rock. So he was a liaison, uh, elected as a liaison to communicate with law enforcement and with the U.S. government and with the FBI and the CIA. For those of you who may or may not know what Standing Rock is, he'll be talking about that today. So he was elected by um, the Seven Council Fires, which is something that the Native American nations have not brought together in over 150 years. And they brought it together because it was necessary at this time. So this will be his 29th year of uh, uh, leading ceremony, uh, and more specifically, the, the Lakota Sundance ceremony. So he's, he's a 28-year, about to be a 29-year Lakota Sundance chief. So, Without further ado, please open your hearts, as it is my great honor to introduce Lee Fleming Wolf. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to start off with uh, purifying the air, purifying people, um, so everything comes out in a positive way. You know, we look at life as in, always try to look at life in a positive way because there's too many negativities, too many negative things happening in today's world. And so I try to start off with a, a smudge, you know, if, if uh, even just smudging the room clears that and clears that away. So the, uh, what, what I do is I, I have um, or given assistance from uh, the creator, you know, uh, with the spirit, uh, what I call angels that come and help. In my ceremonies, they come and help me. So. It's not my choice to do what I do, it's the Creator's choice. And through visions, that's how I was chosen. And so that's why I have to walk in this way of life. I don't have to, but I'd be gone already, you know. So I, you know, it, it, it's an honor, but it's also scary. It's, it's, it's really, really hard, you know. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, like, a, like a Ryan said, it's, it's difficult to walk this way of life because you have to really put everyone first, but you always put yourself last and follow the, the Lakota values, the seven Lakota values, the basic values. So I think they moved it up to 12, but the seven is, is, is what the main, main values are, you know, and what, what, like what he described. So anyway, at this time, I'm gonna say a short prayer for everyone, for everyone's family. Okay. So anyway, uh, at this time, I'm going to sing a song, say a short prayer, and then we'll continue on well, as uh, Ryan here. And I'd also like to thank uh, everyone here, um, everyone for, at uh, EVE, um, Brandy, uh, Ryan, um, uh, Lorraine for uh, making this possible, all the people that, you know, and all of you for coming, you know, to, to listen to what it, what Tungashi, the creator, is going to put out through me, you know, most of it is, you know, so most of it, and, and they asked, uh, Ryan asked, I said, how are you going to do this? I said, well, I'll, you know, I'll see what comes through me first, you know, and other than that, I'm going to wing it, <laughs> you know, so anyway, uh, they always say in my, to my people, they say, you know, speak from your heart. When you speak from your heart, it's the truth, you know, so. That's why I, uh, I don't have, except for to remind me of what I'm supposed to talk about next. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, this is a prayer song. And what it means is, uh, Creator, look at me and hear my prayer. Uh, look at me and hear my prayer. This is me. You know, 
have pity on me and look, you know, listen, to me, listen to my prayers, make my prayers good, and for everybody, for all of you, and your families, because I know you have families out there, and the people that uh, need it, you know, there's people that really need our prayers. So anyway, here, try a hitch it to Ya <laughs> So anyway, um, you know, people ask me why, uh, why uh, this Indian wears a hood, uh, uh, boots and a hat. <laughs> you know, I that's how I grew up. I grew up in uh, Nebraska. I grew up on a part uh, ranch and farm uh, after I uh, left the reservation, and my father took us, he went and got a job in the next state over from Pine Ridge Reservation because all of us kids were getting sent to boarding schools and he wanted to save us. Even though I went to boarding school for a couple summers, he wanted to save us from, from being away, taken away from the family. So he took a job and, and so I started, uh, we grew up in Nebraska. And when you grow up in a ranch style way, you know, you learn to ride horses and you know, take care of cattle and, and all that stuff. And when I moved back to the reservation, uh, my grandfather uh, uh, was in charge of uh, the ranch that, that, that we, you know, he hired us, me and my brother and uh, my uncles to take and check the cattle. So we, we rode horse from before the sun came up until after it went down. And of course, when you do that, you want to have fun. So then there comes the rodeo, you know? So we rode rodeo, bulls and bareback horses and saddle bronc and, and uh, through all this life, you know, different people learn from different experiences, you know? Um, I had to go through all this, but to begin with, uh, when I was about seven years old, uh, the creator gave me a dream, a vision, scared the heck out of me. Um, so I went and I told my, uh, my parents, my aunt, aunt and uncle, and we, I remember exactly we were going, we were taking them home, and we were in the car, and I told them, and they said, you're too young, it'll come back to you someday, we'll pray for you. But at that time, my grand, both my grandfathers, you know, my dad's dad and his brother were still alive, and his brother was a UEP man, a medicine man. And so when I told them, they said, pray, and everything will come, it'll be okay, someday it'll come back, you know. So um, I, I did, and then I continued li on life, you know, I, whatever I was supposed to do. I um, grew up, uh, like I said, on the ranch, and, and uh, when I, I, 
I think it was like uh, my uh, sophomore year in high school, uh, we went to uh, Pine Ridge. And I don't know if anybody knows where Pine Ridge is. Before we start the ceremony, just we start the ceremony, that train goes back and says, oh yeah, the spirits are here now. <laughs> it seems like when we finish, it goes by again. <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, we went to uh, Pine Ridge one day, my uncle and I went to Pine Ridge one day, and he said, Let's, uh, we were bored, you know, my uh, grandpa had to do business at the tribal office, so he went in and uh, and uh, we got bored and we were looking at where you parked, but right in front of us was the recruiting office. So he said, well, let's go and um, let's go see what they have to say. Yeah. And so we went in there first. I said, let's go to the Marine office first. And he said, no, let's go to the Army uh, recruiter first. So we went in there just as, out of curiosity. I just turned 17. And out of curiosity, we walk in there. Two weeks later, we were in the Army. I was like, man, they talked us into that quick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, a couple months later, you know, I have orders to go to Vietnam. And uh, at, at age 17, I just turned 17. And uh, I was like, okay, well, this is what I signed up for. You know, I guess this is what we're going to go. But after three weeks of waiting to go over there, they finally said, well, you're not going. Our unit's not going because we're starting to pull people out. And... Uh, I uh, found out later that the uh, 4th Infantry Division, every time they dropped them into the border of Cambodia and Vietnam, they all got wiped out. The whole unit got wiped out. They kept on, but they kept on sending reinforcements in to get wiped out. And that's where I was headed. And so in life, a lot of things that happened, um, I, I came to understand that I had to experience all that. But also in life, I understood why the Creator chose me to be uh, uh, where I'm at today, because um, the, the, he, basically the Creator saved me from all these things. And when I looked back at everything, I, I got in seven car accidents that I, sh I shouldn't have, you know, they were pretty bad ones. And I also came out of those. I looked at, back at life and everything uh, to us in Lakota spiritual way, uh, seven, four and seven are sacred numbers. And it adds up. It, it, I, I started doing these ceremonies, and 28 years later, you know, after I fin went through, finished my 28th year, I, it opened the doors, and, and I got to go to Spain. And, and so I was thinking, okay, and then when I got to Spain, it also opened the doors, and I got invited to Canada, to Brazil, to Australia, to New Zealand, to... to um, uh, Peru, uh, what was that? Ecuador, and then there's another uh, France, Germany, Sweden, uh, the UK. It, it, I got invited one after another, and I was like, "What's going on here?" You know, it's, 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 I'm supposed to start, but I under, also understood that there's a reason for everything in life, you know, and so I, I looked at, I thought about that, and and, and I said, "Well." I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best to, to, to spread the word of how and what I know and how I feel. Because, uh, like I said, you know, Creator um, chose me to, to lead ceremony. And if you think about it, the 28 years, that's four times seven, four, seven. And when I spoke in, in uh, what was that, that university I spoke at? Uh, Sevilla. So, so yeah, you know, uh, there was an auditorium full of young people, and I said, this is beautiful because they need to, to hear this. And uh, when I spoke there, I looked at the, uh, what was it, the, the month or day of the month, and it was the 28th. Yeah. yeah. And, and I didn't realize that until I was talking. And then I, I just happened to look at my time because I wanted to see what time it is, and I said, uh, and then the date came up, and I was like, hey, it's the 28th. So in life, a lot of things... 
are either added up or multiplied by or seven, four or seven. And so, uh, just like our sweat ceremonies, there's four doors. You know, you, we're, we're not, we can't do three because it's not a complete ceremony. You know, you just wasted that, that much time, sort of. Uh, you can't do five because you're asking for more. You're asking for more problems, more issues. And so you don't overdo that. And so, you know, you have to keep it right at four. There's, you know, for us uh, medicine people, we have to use uh, 28 rocks, 28 grandfathers, 28 stones, because, you know, again, that's four times seven. And that's what we're supposed to use. And, and some of the healing ceremonies, I use 104, but that's what my hochoka, my uh, altar, you know, requires. So anyway, um, in life, you know, I looked back and I said, okay, well, all these make sense all the way up. And uh, uh, I understood that there are certain things that pull, that, that pull you, that want, want you to, and just like you were saying, you want to go back to uh, Arizona, the, de the okay. desert, because it's pulling you. There's a reason for that, because you either away from that too long or, or, or um, you need to reconnect where you're supposed to, where you're used to, where you were raised from or, or born from. So you, you, you pray about that and, and then you say, okay, well, I'm gonna make it happen. And if it does happen, that, that's your, it's supposed to be that way. Also in, in life, I, I um, have a lot of uh, deja vu. Yeah, and, and deja vu is like, oh yeah, I've been here, you know. I've, I've, I've been through this or I see, we were here, you know, we done this. And uh, that means that uh, we're on the right track. We're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And so that's how I look at things. And I was like, okay, good, you know, let's keep praying. But also in life, there's all, you know, there's certain negativity. Certain people have negativity that so I'm supposed to help them with. And there's a reason for that because that's what they need. The help that they need, the prayers that they need to get over this roadblock or this uh, health issue or this family issue or, or legal issue, health issue, you know, yeah, I, I help them try to get over that. Um, a lot of people just con solely just concentrate or, or they think that, that whatever problem that they, they come to, they focus on that instead of looking beyond that. Looking beyond with prayer, it's not gonna stay there forever. Somehow, some way, it's going to get resolved, and somehow it's going to be taken care of. You know, whether uh, the, because it's going to take you and the Creator to do that, to overcome that. Because I look at it as like a speed bump. We come up to a speed bump, and pe people focus on that speed bump because it's you, you got to go slower or whatever to to get over that hump. People don't look at the other side where the road is smooth again. You know. It's because it's not going to stay there. And some people get ca too carried away and say, concentrate on that speed bump and they, you know, scream and yell and think that everything's over with, you know. And so I explain it to them in that way. But this, this uh, seven values that, 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 that uh, Ryan uh, mentioned, and I'm grateful that, I, I, you know, Ryan and I uh, connected, met, because uh, he's writing a book. Uh, he's writing a book that, uh, you know, for me, because uh, I'm not very good with words, and he's, he's great with words. Sometimes he's too good. I can't understand it sometimes, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, I, I believe in him, I trust in him, I, and, and uh, he's, he, he does, he does, he's a good writer, great writer. And so I know that uh, because of, of uh, of what he does and where, you know, he's come to our ceremonies, the large ceremonies in, in South Dakota, that he understands a lot and I see that. And so I know that, that, that whatever he writes is gonna be great. You know, so, but back to these values, these Lakota values, the respect, the honor, humility. My grandfather taught me these long time ago when I was little. And uh, uh, in life, all, every time I came to a speed bump, or my life thought, you know, it was hopeless, or or, or some kind of a, some kind of an issue uh, where it was hard for me to overcome. I um, one thing that comes back to me is what he told me. 
uh, and it only, it's only one of these, you know, a couple of these. But that's all I had to remember, you know. He said, he told me, um, he said, Tukter ya onki hena oyate ki oichaki naha unshicha unwo. He says, wherever you're at, help people and conduct yourself in a humble way and everything will be okay. And when I do that, I get over that. So my, my objective is not just for the young people, but for everyone. If you can follow this, these seven sacred, these seven values, Lakota values, it'll help. And if, if you teach the young people these values, it'll help them in life. And, you know, it, it, it can make a big difference. You know, um, uh, in our way, uh, we don't have a word for I love you. Because in our way, um, uh, what we say is, Chante o Chigalangelo, I hold you in my heart. You know, and, and so in our way, we automatically know. From, I've never heard my grandpa, my mom, or my, my father ever tell me, I love you. But because of these values, I automatically knew. And I automatically knew that I was loved, and, that I lo and they knew I loved them. So with these values, you know, it, helps, it helped me through life. And the, I try to teach that to my children, uh, my grandchildren. I try to teach that to all the young people. And, and that way, it'll, it'll have a positive impact. In, in today's world, in today's society, you know, it, it, it's getting harder and harder. Because, you know, uh, issues like, uh, and we were just talking about, it, like, you know, what happened, Fukushima. You know, when uh, Ryan and I took me to, the, to, the, to see the beach, uh, Beacon's Beach, uh, yesterday, I went out there and it was beautiful, you know, surface, kind of a little chilly, but we were out there. And I looked out, I looked at the surfers and I looked beyond the surfers and out there, I don't know, I'm thinking, it's hard to judge distance, but I'm thinking like maybe a thousand yards or beyond that, you know. I looked at it and all of a sudden the water turned red out there. The water turned red and the first thing that came to my mind was uh, Fukushima. And I said, I wonder if people are really getting affected by these surfers, these swimmers, or whatever. And so I, you know, I prayed, and I said, you know, this is all these issues. You know, we have to we have to think about and pray about. And 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 I know that we're guilty of that too. But you know, um, uh, the use of, uh, of of oil, the the petroleum and what it does to the air, you know, what it does to the ground, what it does to, if it, you know, and it's constantly, these oil, oil pipelines are constantly breaking and, and uh, it's contaminating our, our water, water system underneath, you know, and when water is our first medicine that the Creator gave us, we're all made of water. You know, they say scientifically, what, 60% of our body is water? 83% of our heart, and, our heart and lungs are made of water? You know, um, we, everything needs water. Plants need water to grow, grass needs water, everything. Animals, birds, everything needs good water. And back on my reservation, because of uranium mining, uh, a lot of people are drinking bad water. You know, and, and there's health issues that come, from, there's a whole bunch of health issues that come from that. And it's all, it's all over the place. And, and like I said, we're, we're guilty of it because we, we drive vehicles. We fly in, you know, in planes to get from point A to point B faster. You know? I thought about that. I was like, if I go back to horses, man, it's going to take me forever to get there. <laughs> I'll still be coming someplace over there in the Rockies this way. <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 we did it before, you know, but there's also, you know, um, there's also already uh, electric cars. Uh, the Japanese already invented uh, uh, cars that are run off of water, you know. Uh, how come we can't convert? Other countries are trying to, 
uh, wind and solar energy, how come we can't do it? Why do we have to focus on, on uh, digging as much oil from the ground as possible? You know, we Lakota people look at oil as the blood of Ojimaka, Grandmother Earth. That's the blood, the life blood of Grandmother Earth. And we start taking that blood out, that blood, she's gonna get weaker and weaker. And then that's where it affects the climate, the air around it. And when it affects the air around it, then these things start to get a little bit more worse, like storms, hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, uh, volcanoes, all these earthquakes, you know, it creates earthquakes. It disturbs Ochimaka. So even though uh, you know, it doesn't happen, and, and, and you, you, everybody should be used to it here by the earthquakes. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it, there's a reason for that, you know. Uh, there's a reason for uh, uh, all these, uh, it's, some of it's natural, but a lot of it's man-made. And I worry, I think about the future of our children and our grandchildren and their children, because well, the way I saw it and the way that, that, that I feel is that within 50 years, we're gonna self-destruct. But the other day, somebody said it's gonna start uh, in 2022. And I was thinking about 2022, that's only a couple years, down, you know, that's only three, four years down the road. I mean, that's quick. And in my lifetime, I remember that when I grew up, uh, my grandpa raised us, when, when me and my brother, when we were little. We used to live in a log cabin, and uh, it took, uh, I think it was like maybe a quarter of a mile. We had to go downhill and into the woods, and there was a creek called White Horse Creek. And we used to take our buckets and, 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 and bring the water, fill those buckets up. You know, they're so big. Fill those buckets up, and we used to head back up because my grandpa was too old. I mean, he barely walked. So we chopped wood, but we, we also went after our, our drinking water, you know, and, and so our cooking water too, you know. And so we, we, we'd grab that and we'd take off. My brother was, you know, two years younger than I was. And uh, by the time we got home, we only had like half a bucket each, but, you know, still, you know, we, we got it up there, you know, and it was good water. I mean, you know, we, we, we drank that water. It came from a, a spring about four, four or five miles up the, up the river, up the creek. Nowadays, uh, we have, we have our, uh, one of our sacred ceremonies, a sundance ceremony right beside Whitehorse Creek. And when you look at that water, you don't even touch it. Because that's how, and plus more people live there through there. And, and, and uh, that's the way it is all over the place. Uh, we knew that Missouri was already contaminated, but we're trying to save as much of it as we can. And that's where Standing Rock came in. Uh, when the Keystone XL pipeline was first being planned uh, and started to be built, uh, I was inside of a ceremony. And I told uh, the people that came and, and joined me, I said, you know, if they continue and if they get hit in the, the, into Nebraska, I said, I'm going to... Uh, Lord Machanupa is a, a pipe that I pray with, a connection to the Creator, and the Eagle Staff. And I'm going to stand in front of that Keystone XL pipeline and pray, and pray that it doesn't go through. Well, after that ceremony, a couple weeks later, it stopped. They didn't, they, you know, they weren't going to, they stopped it. So I was like, great, you know. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, the uh, next thing that came up was uh, uh, Standing Rock, the Dapple, you know, uh, the pipeline up there. And I was like, uh, you know, I made a commitment to do this, but that was Keystone XL, and this is a different pipeline, so I guess I don't have to go, you know, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, I was, I was trying to make an excuse, but um, what happened was it kept on pulling at me. You know, just like what I, you know, we, we talked about, you know, it just kept on pulling at me. Like, there's a, I needed to be there, but at the time, I couldn't be there because I didn't have no way, I didn't have no funds. I, I, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, I have a vehicle, but I, you know, I don't have any money. I, I can't make it up there, you know. So that was another excuse that I had, you know. I was like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta do this and do that. But it kept on pulling at me, and I was like, 
I, I need to be there. For some reason, I need to be there. And then um, I was sitting outside one day and uh, my uh, 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 niece, um, uh, they have a powwow down river from the Missouri from Standing Rock and it's uh, called uh, Lower Brule. And her mother and I used to sit, and we, I, when I used to go visit her, she used to uh, sit me down and feed me breakfast and, you know, feed me and, 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 and talk to me. And we, we, got to, we, got, we got along, we talked about everything. <laughs> Excuse me. And every year she invited my, the drum group to, to Lower Brule. Every time, if you come up there, we'll feed you, we'll put you up in the, you know, wherever, a hotel, wherever. Camping spot, you don't have to worry about nothing. Every year she did that, for, I think for seven years, and she passed on. And then when she called me, she said, I know that you, pro you, you told my mom every year that you would be there and you never made it. And she said, uh, it's been four years since she passed on. We would like your drum group to come up and sing for her memorial songs and, and all the contests that they, they were going to put on. And he says, your drum group will sing all that. So I was like, OK, I'll be there. Because it made me feel all those years, and I still didn't make it. So I said, OK, I'll be there. And then I got off the phone, and I was like, how am I going to be there? <laughs> I'm still back in the same situation. So. Anyway, I called a friend and she said, if you meet me at the gas station, I'll fill your tank. I was like, okay, if you fill my tank and gave me uh, $15, I think. And then I called another friend in Fort Collins and said, if you made it this far, I'll give you 20 bucks. And I was like, okay. And then I asked my, uh, my sister and she says, if you make it to Scott's Bluff where my other sister lives, she'll give you another 20 bucks. So I was like, all right. So, okay, I had it planned. And then next was my singers. Okay, who, because it was summertime, everybody was busy. So I was like, okay, well, I got to call. And I kept on calling. Finally, I got a hold of one singer. Then finally, my son say, sings on the drum too. Uh, so I, and he was up in Pine Ridge. So I was like, okay, well, we got him. And then there was a couple more singers, but we didn't know when they were going to arrive at that uh, lower rural. So eventually we made it. And when we got there, after I picked up my, uh, this other singer and uh, where the, the $20 here and $20 there, and I finally got there, my gas gauge read just a little above empty when we got there. And I was like, Phew, we made it, you know. Good old Indian cars, they run on empty. You know? <laughs> so we got there and we camped and every, we got, we, everything was taken care of. They fed us and, and, and uh, we went through the ceremonies and everything. And, and uh, it was really good. It was, it was really good. The other singers showed up, we sang. Um, I even have videos on that too, if you want to look at that. But um, when we finished, uh, they asked me, uh, okay, what, what, what should we do next? And I was like, Standing Rock is only a few miles up the road. And so we got there. We didn't know what to expect. We, we got there and when we, when we first got there, the Cheyenne River uh, veterans were camped and, uh, right inside the front, uh, front gate. We got there and there was a few little camps out there. And was, I seen seven teepees out there. And so I asked them, they didn't know what was going on, so I went up to the, um, the, the other camp inside the reservation because this camp was off the reservation, right outside the reservation, right outside of Canyon Ball River. And so I went up there and I said, where can we camp? And they had beautiful camping spots. And they said, well, I'll go find out. And so uh, the lady we talked to took off and then 10 minutes later she came back and she said, uh, what, what tribe are you? And I said, Oglala. And she said, oh, you guys belong across the river. So I was like, here we go, you know. Because the, the, seven, the seven tribes of the Sioux, what they call the Great Sioux Nation, the Oglala, the Rosebud, the Cheyenne River, the uh, uh, um, Standing Rock, uh, Sisseton, uh, Yankton, you know, um, were all the seven council fires. And every time we go in battle, in history, they send Oglala first. And so here we go again, we're put across the river <laughs> to be near the, the front lines, basically. So I was like, okay, well, well, we'll go over there. So we capped, and then I asked, uh, which, which uh, teepee do, do we get? And he said, it's your choice. So I went along, and there was a little camp, uh, camp in front of the fourth teepee, and I said, is any Oglala here? And so I said, there's a couple of us in here. 
So I was like, we got the right one. So we stopped there, we unpacked and set up our camp. And we sang a song for the spirits because that is sacred land. There's burial grounds, you know, near there. And they, that's another camping area that, there's, that we're in a long time ago. And so we camped and uh, we sang song at night in, in, in honor of our ancestors. And uh, pretty soon after a while, the bus load, a couple buses pulled up and they're all Oglala. And there were uh, you know, older women that, you know, really uh, get their way. You know, they can be pretty mean. <laughs> they got off the bus and they, they asked me, where, can, where should we camp? And I said, well, they, they chose, you know, told us to, to pick a teepee. So this is what we're, we picked. And I guess we're all going to have to, you know, and there was a lot of them. So we're going to have to try to fit here somehow. And they said, our camping gear is way behind. We left it way behind. It's not going to be here until maybe sometime early in the morning. And, and they all piled out, and they spread themselves out, and they took over all seven. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and you don't want to, I don't want to say anything because they're all old elderly women that can probably kick my butt if I say <laughs> one thing. <laughs> so, that, you know, after all that happened, I was like, uh, okay, um, and then they finally gave up two teepees because other tribes came in, so they gave up two teepees, so we had the rest. And, and so then it started to grow. During that whole night, cars kept on coming in and coming in all day, all night, all day, for days. And the camp grew, slowly grew, grew, grew. The things that we experienced is like what you would experience in a war zone, you know, all these young people. And, uh, and uh, by the way, this is uh, Raymond right here. He, he's, uh, he, he was, uh, he's a big help. When he first came into Oglala camp up there in Standing Rock, he, he looked exactly like Neil Young, so I started calling him Neil. <laughs> well, Neil came camp. Yeah, and Neil came through camp, him and uh, uh, Daryl Hanna. And so, um, he knows what I'm talking about. He was up at the Oglala camp. He helped a lot. Uh, I, I had to teach him how to chop wood, but you know, he, he was making a little bitty pieces. And I was like, well, you know, we need a little bit bigger pieces to last longer, you know. But uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so anyway, when the camp grew, and what 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 we were, what these young people were uh, focusing on was to save the Missouri from getting any more contamination. At first, when it first started, it was above Bismarck, but because of the city, because they didn't want their water contaminated, they voted to move it further south, uh, right above Standing Rock. And so the pipeline was supposed to go through there. And that's what they were, a guaranteed break because I asked one of them, and I think he was, uh, what do you call it, uh, a person being sent in to try to convert people into supporting the oil company. Yeah. And I, uh, what do you call them, trolls? Lobbyists. Yeah, lobbyists Lobbyist or whatever. And I was talking to him, and uh, it didn't take me long to figure out, you know, this infiltrator, you know, yeah. because of the question, why don't you support oil? How come you, you know, <laughs> and I was like, why is he asking that? He's supposed he's in our camp, you know. But they were all over, I guess. And um, uh, he said that, uh, he told me, he said uh, that he used to, uh, and this is his story, he used to work on pipelines. So I'm like, uh, okay. I said, how good are these pipelines? You know, he says, they're pretty good. So I'm like, okay, well, um, how many years can you guarantee for it not to break? And he said, they average nine years, maybe 10 years. And, and uh, but, oh no, he said, they average about 20 years, he said. About 20 years, they, 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 that's what they uh, uh, estimated it at. So I was like, but, he said, they can break in nine, you know, nine, 10 years. So I was like, so I looked at him and I was like, so you're saying that it's a guaranteed break whether it's 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it's a guaranteed break. And he said, yeah, it'll break. So sooner or later, that pipeline's gonna break. It's guaranteed contamination. And if you look at the map where it's coming through above Standing Rock, if it breaks through 
Further, a little further down, we've got Oglala Aquifer. It's the biggest aquifer in the United States. And that serves water for a lot of people. So at the beginning, these young people were worried about their contamination on Standing Rock. But when I got there, I was like, wait a minute, this is not just for the people they're, they're of Standing Rock, it affects all the people down the Missouri. It affects all the people that depend on the Oglala Aquifer. And not only are, you have to think about uh, um, uh, not just the people, but all the wildlife and all the birds and all the fish that are in that water, all the plants, all the medicine plants that are grow along that water and away from that water because a lot of them are getting piped out. And then I, I thought about Miniwichoni as a project that we pipe our water from the Missouri River all the way across, uh, halfway across the uh, South Dakota to Pine Ridge, and that's our drinking water. And even that, they have to uh, put uh, chlorine in it to purify it more because somehow it got contaminated. So then I thought about that and I was like, and then, okay, it went beyond that. So now it affects the farmers and the ranchers. Farmers have to go crops with water and they have to put it to market. The ranchers have to raise cattle, uh, sheep or whatever, and, and to put it into market. And if they can't do that, then it affects the consumers. And then it affects, and then it goes into food, sh food shortage and it affects everybody and spreads and keeps on going. So I realized that this isn't just for Standing Rock, it's, it, it's for everybody that uses that Missouri on both sides. And then it affects, it goes further out. And then I said, you know what? Other countries are going through the same thing. And so it's affecting the whole world. And so this water, this life, the, the life that, that, that we have to, that, the, that medicine that we have to have is, is, is getting jeopardized every single day. Because th then thoughts like, when I, when I was thinking a long time ago, we used to fish in this uh, river, it's a pretty wide river called the White River. And it came through Nebraska and into South Dakota and kept on winding around. And we used to catch catfish about that big, you know, big ones. And I, my grandpa used to do that. Now it's dry. It's been dry for a couple decades. It's just, at first it was muddy and then now it's just, the only time it fills up is the rainy season. You know, um, but there used to be, it used to be rushing river. But because it gets blocked off and because ranchers said, okay, well, I need this water, so I'm gonna just dam it off. And it kept on going. By the time it got to us, there's nothing, you know? So these things like that, it affects, it affects uh, the, the, the livelihood of everyone, you know? Um, with all these, these uh, uh, issues that come up, and I know there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of other problems. There's health issues. You know, Monsanto had no good for our, you know, the food. It's either food, the air, or, or, or you know, the, um, uh, the water. And and when when it affects us in that way, you know, um, what are we gonna? What are our kids gonna do? What are their their our grandchildren are gonna do? You know, how are they gonna survive? Do we, you know, do we think about that? Do, do these oil companies think about it? No, they don't. They just think about that dollar, you know? But because society around this world made it so that we depend on the money, that, that, that dollar, that money, it can't change that. You know, it, I can't go to a store and get some food because, without that money, you know? Uh, I can ask for it, but they're not going to give it to me because they're thinking about that money. You know, so if society has made it so we ha we're dependent on it. And it's throughout this world. And, and when they, they're de dependent on it, and these corporations are so big that now they run the government, the governments. And so what I'm saying is that I've been trying to, and, and, and and I think I'm making a little bit of progress. I'm trying to spread the word that the seventh generation, the seventh generation, which is uh, our young people, the young people that are up at Standing Rock. Uh, when I was young, they, they explained to me that the seventh generation is our, our indigenous people that are coming up the next, in the next couple of generations, but back then. 
Now we're there, seventh generation's here. When I was up at Standing Rock, I realized that the seventh generation is all the people in that age category now around this world. They're, they need our support. They need, and it's gonna take more than just support, it's gonna need our help. They're, they're the ones that are gonna save humanity. But they need help. And just like, it's the same thing, just like that gun control thing, where all these high school students or all these school students walked off and, and, and protested, you know, not only in the state capitol, but in Washington. You know, they got together and they told everybody, you know, it's our turn to vote. We're gonna make changes. It's the same thing with the seventh generation. They're the same people, the age group. They're gonna make changes and they need our support. Because we need to make positive, we need to make positive decisions in how this earth is gonna keep going. And we're gonna prolong it. Eventually, Unji Makha, Grandmother Earth, is gonna purify itself. You know, it's naturally gonna purify itself. But we don't have to make it man-made sooner, you know, we don't have to make it next week, you know. We can prolong it and make changes. And so uh, Ryan and I went to Spain and we talked. We talked to um, um, uh, the young people, their universities, the, some of the ceremonies I did. I was only supposed to do two ceremonies. I ended up doing what, 14, 15? Yeah, because they are going through the same thing. They went and showed me the river, the, the water levels in their rivers and their reservoirs, and it was at only 15%. And this one, I'll never forget, they showed me the river way down below, and they said, look how, look how far it went down. So I, was, I looked at that. And then I looked to the left in the distance, there was two nuclear power plants running. And that's another thing we have to get rid of. You know, and granted, that's power, but, goes back to if man can get power from the sun, solar, wind, how come we don't do that? You know, why, why, don't, why can't we do that to think about our, our children and our grandchildren, our future? We, you know, we, we, we can't be so selfish just, just to think about ourselves now, but just because we're okay, you know? We have to think ahead. And so when we went over there, they also took us uh, to Portugal to talk, talk to this, uh, I guess, influential pe person. It's like a, the largest permaculture farm. Yeah, largest permaculture farm to, to give us a tour and why and how things work there. And uh, they, I think, wanted to connect with uh, the parliament. Yeah. They wanted to make good relations and they, they uh, uh, used us to make that good relation. And uh, after we left, uh, what is it, about a month later, you, that report came out? Yeah, a gentleman named uh, Jose Fiscal, who, who's in Sevilla, who is a member of parliament, he's the environmental counselor for the city of Sevilla. He uh, publicly, after meeting Lee and, and having us, well, he spoke there, having Lee speak, speak there with such a uh, well-received, like the people just, were open ears and, and um, open hearts, and they received him really well. And to have members of government witness that in public, it, I, it affected them. They're already thinking this way, but but the fact that they could see it amongst the college, you know, amongst the youth, I think it really affected them. And he put forth a bill, and um, about a month after we left, it was uh, I think it was eight hundred million dollars for for water rights um, around the largest. Uh, it's like a state park called Doniana, and it's, it's an estuary full of animals and birds, and it's, it's mostly waterways. $800 million to protect that, that sacred land over there. And the future of their children. And the future of their children. Yeah. So it, 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 we made them think to the point where they, they thought about the future and made changes, for uh, positive changes for the future. And so. Uh, what I told them was like, okay, well, every place we did ceremonies or every place we did speaking engagements, you know, you take that and I asked the people, you know, uh, tell that to people. You know, you only have to tell it to one or two people and, and have that spread out, keep, keep spreading up, you know, and I, I, especially the young people. I talked at uh, Savelli University and at first it was supposed to be a small classroom, 
so many of these young people were interested in it that they moved it into, what is it, an auditorium or a large auditorium. A large auditorium. And it still got packed, standing room only, you know. So I told them the same thing. You know, you take this, and if you think about the future, you spread this word. And so they started to organize. They started to do things to, to think about the water. And so I, I, I'm thinking that uh, because of, of all this that's happening and because why is it, and it goes back to the same thing, why am I invited to all these countries? I'm supposed to go there to do the same thing I, I did there, but not only me, but as many people as we can, you know? Because I'm, 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 I consider myself nobody, you know? I'm, I'm just, you know, a prayer person. I, I, I care about everybody, you know? We all are in this together. What did they say? We're all, in the, we're all in the same boat, you know? It, it, it just isn't certain groups of people or races or ages or whatever. It, it, we're all in the same, we're all, we only have one earth, you know? And so we have to think about that and we have to work in a positive way where we spread this word and support the seventh generation so they can make changes in the government, make changes in energy, make changes in a good way of life. You know, instead of being violent and everything being negative, you know, the, I know there's different issues all over the world, but there's one thing that, 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 that I think about is you think beyond that. How are we going to save ourselves from self-destruction? You know, uh, how are we going to, what, what we have to think about everybody, not just ourselves, but the ones that can't speak for themselves, the four legged, the ones that fly, the, one, the fish that, you know, the little grass that grows, the plants, these plants. I don't know if they're real, but <laughs> these, you know, plants, plants are alive. They listen, they hear you. Trees are alive. Everything's alive. Everything that grows has a, what we call a nari, a spirit. When it grows, even a blade of grass has a nahi, a spirit, and it needs water to grow, you know? So, you know, you think about all this, even air, air moves, air has a spirit. Everything around us, spirit is within us, creator is in with us, creator is in with everything that grows. We're all in this as one. You know, people have a name for creator in different ways, you know, God, Buddha, uh, what are the other names for that? Jesus Christ. Because we have that connection, that connection. The Lakota people were sent, uh, the white buffalo calf woman, to teach us seven sacred ceremonies. There you go again, seven sacred ceremonies. When you go through these seven sacred ceremonies, it's the direct connection because we were having a hard time and because we were facing extinction, sent this person down, this young woman, white buffalo calf woman, to show us and brought us the pipe, the chinupa. So we have that connection. They said, anytime you have a hard time, when she finished teaching us this and before she left, she says, anytime the people have a hard time, you put this together and you pray, it's a direct connection to the creator. And that's why, you, you know, uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to explain because you have to see that and experience it in order for it, for you to believe it. You know, there's a lot of things out there that, that uh, or it could be in here too, that, that connect with you. You know, the, the angels, what I call them, spirits, you know, they come, they help in ceremony, you know, and, and even it's it's like it's like you believe in really a person that always tells the truth and they so one day they tell you i've seen a flying saucer just the other day and it looked like this and like that and i was like okay well i believe you yeah i believe you see all that but in the back of your mind you're going to have that little bitty doubt because you didn't see it yourself there's a lot of things that that i experienced and a lot of things that uh, that i went through a lot of ceremonies, a lot of spirit helpers, a lot of, a lot of prayer, answered prayers, I should, I should say, that only the Creator can do. And, and, and whether, it, I can explain it over and over, but unless you go through it, then you'll understand. And some of you probably already do. You know, you already believe that, that uh, there's a higher power, you know, in prayer. Because sooner or later, we, we need them. Everybody needs them.
You know, sooner or later, there's something that happens in life, in your life, whether it's your family or something that's connected to you that, or somebody asks for it, pray for me. You're going to need that prayer. And it's good to know that the Creator is always there because part of that creation is within us. You know, that's why the cycle of life, you understand that. It's really hard to let people go when it's their time to go. It's really hard. But once you understand that cycle of life, our body comes from Earth. Our body goes back to Earth. Our spirit takes off, hits that Milky Way, and heads south. You know? Did you go like that? <laughs> what time is it then? Um, but that's how we believe in the Lakota Way, the Milky Way. It's called the Nari uh, Chanku, the, the spirit road. Gets up there and takes off. Pray, pray for a good journey. Be happy for them. Because we're going to be there. It's inevitable. Everybody's going to be there. Eventually. We just have a different um, train ride, plane ride, whatever you want to call it. It's booked for us, wherever. So you always take that and live every day as best you can, as positive as you can, in prayer, and things will go good for you. But we've got a big problem. We, you know, I could say, well, we have this issue about guns, or we have this issue about a cancer, or we have this issue about uh, uh, some kind of health issue or, or environmental issue. But overall, we got to think in the big picture, OK, the environmental issue, yeah, climate change. It's quick. It's, it's happening, you know, if you, even the Inuits are from uh, Alaska, they know that the glaciers are changing, they're melting faster. There's studies done, the, uh, the, the ice caps used to be really big, now they're shrinking. You know, the oceans are rising because of that. Climate change, axis of the earth is t tilting a little bit. We don't notice it, but it did. That's why, why do you think these storms go further south? You know, why, why do you think we were in Colorado? We, we haven't had a winter. It snowed a couple times, two or three inches, but shoot, we used to have blizzards. We used to have feet, feet of snow. It hasn't come in a couple of years, two or three years. It's changing. But just because I, I can go down to the gas station or grocery store and, oh, they still got food, I've, I've seen. I've seen one time that it was so bad of a blizzard, went to the store to pick up bread and all the, all the shelves were empty because the trucks couldn't come in. And I started to think, what happens if this happens all over the place? What are people going to do? Do they know, know how to uh, look at uh, what grows and what to eat, how to fish, how even to, to, to kill game, you know? You know, we, we pray, you know, every time we take a deer's life, we pray. We pray for that spirit because it's saving us, you know. And so, you know, when something like that happens, everybody, it go, everybody goes in chaos, you know, everybody's worried, everybody's frantic, everybody's saying, well, well you know, go, how are we gonna make it down to the next grocery store? Well, what do you think if this grocery store is going to the same thing, well, the next grocery store is gonna be the same thing? Why go all the way there to find out, you know? But things like that, you know, you think about. And like I said, Standing Rock brought the seventh generation, not just from there, not just from across the United States, but from around the world, it brought them together. It's, a, it, 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 it's making them look at reality. And they're the ones that are changing the, the, the they're, 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 what they see for young people is really great because nobody else thinks about it, you know? They're the ones that are going to make the difference. And so that's why, you know, I hope that, that people, you know, spread this word and, and keep on spreading this word all over. And I'm going to do my best because, you know, like I said, society made it where it takes money, you know, I, and I, I, you know, I even need somehow to raise money to get to these countries, you know. I'm one at a time, not just think about it. Well, okay, what's the, where's the next worst place, you know? <laughs> but it's happening all over. 
you know. Uh, digging up on uh, Unche Makai uh, in Africa, in South America, Central America, just because of what they can get to sell. How to make that money. It's all over the world. How to, you know, when I was talking at that university, they gave me a bottle of water and I was like, look, long time ago, when I was young, I never thought I'd buy water. I never bought, you know, sooner or later, you know, and, and they sell air too, you know. And so if we have to pay for both, then what else? I mean, and, and now we can't even collect rainwater. We used to do that. My grandpa used to, we used to have big barrels. Rainwater came in there, we'd clean off the top, and we drink that, you know, that was our cooking and drinking water, you know, besides the creek. But nowadays you can't do that because it's against law, you can go to jail for doing that, you know. So, so things like that, you know, what, what else are they going to come up to, to sell, you know? What else are they going to take away from us? What else, you know? But society made it so we have to buy these things, we have to, until the seventh generation makes that change to solar, wind, government, to think about their future, you know. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say, and uh, uh, we still got 15, 20 minutes. Uh, well, I can talk about Raymond here for 15 minutes.